So today's video, we're going to go over low amperage or low draw current devices that you'd add to a vehicle like dash cameras, line output converters, DSP possibly, anything like that. Now, whenever making your own ground, it's a good idea to check everything with a multimeter because some vehicles might be using different types of materials or there might be something in between where it's actually not grounding that well. Today, we're not going to talk about high draw items like aftermarket amplifiers. We're going to save that for a different video. So I think the best place to find ground is use a factory ground bolt and you see these factory grounds. Now, depending on the vehicle, you might want to disconnect the negative terminal. Most vehicles you can, but always read your service manual to see if there's a procedure whenever disconnecting the negative terminal, especially on newer vehicles. But you can see here, it's actually mounted onto the subframe, but it's been engineered, tested, and designed to go there. So I think this is the best place to get grounds. So you can ground off the OBD2 as well. I know a lot of professionals do it for low current remote starters. I actually stay away from it. I've done diagrams where they recommend grounding here. I'll end up going to a factory ground like we've shown over there. It probably actually ends up over there anyways. So tread lightly when going on to the OBD2. I've seen uh, Thinkware actually creates an OBD2 plug for here. So they're, they're testing it, they're backing it. But for me personally, I actually stay away from this area. Okay, so now we can go ahead, disconnect our ground. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make our ground. I do have a video strictly on crimping small gauge wires. If you guys wanna to refer to that. And when it comes to the grounds, I don't insulate the ring terminal because it's going to touch metal anyways. I've been working on a lot of older RAMs, like early 2000s. On the factory grounds, I've been seeing a little bit of corrosion, so I'm adding a little bit of dielectric grease when I install this to help prevent corrosion over time. Okay, our ground is all tightened back up, and we run everything with all the factory wires, so it's tucked out of the way. Another area where I'll go is actually the subframe here because these bolts go right into the chassis and this is bare metal. I find for low current devices, this works actually perfectly fine. Just use a nut and bolt. This is what a simple nut and bolt solution will look like and you always will obviously want to make sure it's really tight. I prefer to use this over self tappers because you have a lot of clamping force when you use hardware like this. The surefire thing you can do, you can actually just bolt directly into the chassis right here. You can just use a, a hardware like this. When it comes to hardware like this, I do have a separate video regarding the positive ground grounding bolt. It's basically, it looks like a repurposed body bolt and the way it threads into the sheet metal, it's a very secure way of doing a ground. Okay, we've gone ahead and bored out one hole. This will be for a grounding bolt, but we still have to clean up the metal and we're gonna use this bit to do it. See how it's nice and round. So typically now with that, if we just had bare paint, or if you had paint, it would just bear this off and you just have a nice little circle afterwards. Now we're gonna put a thin layer of dielectric grease to prevent any corrosion. Final step, we have to pound in the bolt. So what we have to do is we have to put the lock washer onto the bolt first. You want to have your ring terminal or your ring flat up against the metal at all times. If you watch my how to ground an amplifier video, you'll see that this bolt will actually flare the metal out and it will self-thread itself. It's not a self-tapping bolt, so that's why I have to drill the hole, but it will self-thread. If you think the sheet metal is too thin, go ahead on the other side and add the, add the nut to it. Now here we have an aftermarket head unit and we are using ground here off the subframe. I do this a lot of Mitsubishis and Nissans. Also, when I'm doing a backup camera, I will grab power and ground off the head unit. The reason why I'm grabbing off the head unit mainly for the ground is 
if the head unit and the camera have the same ground, we have less chance of having a ground loop. That way we don't see all those weird fuzzy lines on the camera when we look at it through the screen. But we have to do some extra things because we have a backup camera. So one, you see I have a pigtail here for ground. This will go straight to chassis because Nissans don't have good grounds in the harness. Here we have our pigtail out for reverse. And then we also have our power wires for our camera. So the way that we like to do it is we actually install a mini relay onto the camera harness because I don't trust the reverse lights and I always think the voltage is low. This is how you make cameras last longer. One, you're gonna have proper voltage to it and the camera only turns on when the vehicle's in reverse. And there you guys have it. So grounding aftermarket devices isn't hard. Usually you're always safe if you go with the factory ground. Now I didn't show you guys soldering onto the factory ground. I'd rather you guys use a ring terminal because you don't know always the gauge of wire that you're going to be soldering onto. You have to keep that in mind. Is it enough that it can flow enough amperage? So if you run a new line directly to factory ground, you're always going to be safe. But there are other places that you can go as well.